you, Lord, that you fill the life of your people, that you fill every heart here so full, that every person in this place encounter your love and grace that you poured out, that all might be able to sing and realize this true you're so amazing, so life-changing, oh, so amazing, you're so life-changing. Savior, Savior of my soul, Savior of my soul, Christ Jesus. And how amazing it is that you are in our midst, Lord Jesus. That you walk up and down the aisles looking for those you might touch. And Holy Spirit, that you might fill those hungry for more. For you look for the hungry, the desperate, the needy, the lowly, the meek, the humble, the broken. Break us, God, that we be so broken. Break us, Lord, that we be so broken towards you. Oh, it's so amazing. So life-changing. So So life-changing by this miracle, by this miracle salvation, by this miracle, this miracle outpouring. I just have to sing it. It's so amazing. Yeah, 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 to Mike, yeah, to Mike. So amazing. So like You're so amazing, so amazing, Lord. You're so life-changing. I tell you, you step into a realm of worship, you can begin to realize a little bit how the angels can just sing the same words, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty who was and is to come. How they witness and see His infinite greatness, His infinite being that would just blow our minds to even think about. Ah, but the Holy Spirit gives us the capacity to receive by the anointing that teaches us all things. Ah. By the word, the living word of God, that is the only instruction manual we could ever need. 
And in fact, all other roads would leave you to be deceived. So praise God for His precious Word that allows the reality of who He is to be in us that we can truly say, so amazing. It's so life-changing. I stir, I'm stirred up and look into the Word that's rearranging every part of me. That I no longer be who I was or myself after the flesh that I thought I was to be. But I could live unto God, Christ Jesus Almighty, who's working mightily in me with greatness that I receive, that I receive by His mercy, by His marvelous mercy which turn my eyes to be able to see from darkness to light that I could walk in something bought with such a precious price that I'm called sought out and called the purchased of Christ. A purchased tabernacle. A temple of the Holy Ghost, ah. a temple not made with human hands or human effort, but by a divine DNA, the incorruptible seed of the Word of God that brought life, the miracle seed, the life born on the inside, in the deepest parts of my being. The life of Christ, Jesus. And my confession within Christ in me. Christ in me. <laughs> Christ in me. This hope of eternal, everlasting glory. Christ in me. That I am complete in Him because I am found completely in Christ. I pray that the reality that we, we are, you are bought with the price Echoes in the depths of your soul like you've never heard it before. The reality that heaven bankrupt itself to purchase you. That God gave his best for me and you. That the love of Christ was shed for us. That he was given for you and for me. And it's beautiful. It's so amazing. So life changing. So amazing, so amazing. Oh, she died on my. Oh, Jolomai, shoo. Oh, Master, Savior, Lord God. Have your way in us, we pray. We who give ourselves to obey you. For you said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And we say, we will obey. <laughs> and with joy, we draw water from the well of salvation. By the Holy Ghost poured out. By the Holy Ghost who reveals Jesus, a fresh revelation of Jesus to us, in us, and through us. Ha! Woo! Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. So deep, so deep, so deep this love. 
so wide, so wide, so wide this love. So great, so great, so great this love of God. It's so amazing, so life changing, so deep, so deep, so deep this love. So wide, so wide, so wide this love. So great, so great. So great this love. Hallelujah. Welcome tonight. If you're a visitor, never been here before, welcome. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that the God of all, the God of all glory, <laughs> has called us to greatness in Him. Now check this out. Greatness is in Him <laughs> is not what the world around us and the world system defines as greatness and success. And I believe I'm going to talk a little bit about that with a, a kind of branch, kind of uh, maybe two or three main themes, but I guess the biggest overarching one is, is the fear of God. How many of you heard the sermon Pastor Mark gave two Sundays ago called Get Detached. Yeah, it's radical, huh? It's a redefinition and a reality of what Jesus himself told us to do. And so I'm going to be in that vein a little bit, taking it from a, a couple other verses of Scripture that corroborate the same thing. But again, it's, it's this... It's this there's the definition of what the world around us tells us is success and what God says. But before I do, I want to begin at Psalms 19. And let's just read the whole chapter to go in, to break into this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everyone there? Love you guys. Love the abiding place family. I just want to say on behalf of heaven, thank you for those of you who are willing to be faithful. Because I tell you, if you're faithful with showing up, not only showing up, but participating with heaven, no matter what, God can find you a person he can use on his behalf. So praise God, those of you who are here tonight, <laughs> that don't just say, oh, I'm going to be doing Pastor Mark's there. But you're the faithful who willing to, or you are willing to stand in the gap, right? We need the church. We need each other. It's nothing of men. It's God's purpose and plan. Verse 1, so greetings tonight. Hello, San Diego. I just like to say that because it, it, it rhymes. <clears throat> Plus, it's getting me prepared for, as Pastor Mark did, to say hello, Nepal. Uh, and I know and I feel in the spirit that we're going to begin to launch out. Pastor Mark already has. And I soon will be traveling with him, minister, co-ministering with him. And how, what an awesome opportunity to realize that now, you and I are in the preparation process of the mighty, almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello, San Diego. Those who stand in the gap for the San Diego area. <laughs> I'm sure there's some others here in, the, in the, the region that are, at least I hope so. But I know I can count on this body here, this group. Verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day other speech, and night unto night show his knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. 
Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. And them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Again, the, the earth being filled with the glory of God. The testament around us of life, the life source, everything that's mentioned here from the, the stars that you placed in the sky like the sun to show with bright beam, illuminate, and give life in this process that he established to be a testament to everyone each day of this system that God designed, the God of all creation. Fear the Lord, the saints. Fear Him, for He is mighty. He's awesome. He's a consuming fire. He's a jealous God. He's a fortress. He's a high tower. He's almighty. All powerful. All creative. All sufficient. Verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Sure, sure. Making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. You know, you keep his statutes. It'll make your heart joyful. You keep in the lines and the life that he's established. Ha! And this keeping greatness of God. Ha! What does he promise? That his statues rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yes, than much fine gold, sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. And you see right here the psalmist proclaiming by the Holy Ghost, speaking forth about how it's much more to be desired than gold. Right? Gold, wealth. That would be what the world system defines as success. The power to do things in this life. You know, power. Men power. Wealth kind of power. So I'm starting here with an Old Testament passage that then Christ Jesus is going to remind us of in the New Testament about how His system and kingdom functions. One that is not based on a gold standard or how much is in a bank account, <laughs> but on the God standard, faith. Verse 11, some of the greatness of taking heed to the word. We read here, verse 11, Moreover, by them is your servant warned, and in keeping of them is great reward. Not just reward, great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse you me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Again, we have this manifested by the psalmist many times, a demonstration and an example to us of being poor and needy and humble, insufficient of ourselves, but that humility that constantly says, Oh, keep me, God. Oh, that my meditation be acceptable in your sight, oh, Lord. That the words of my mouth be right, always. And just before I jump over 
to the New Testament, I want to read just a couple things. Let's go to Psalm 34, 9, verse 9 to 22. Talking about the fear of the Lord a bit. It's highlighted here again in this, another passage of the Psalms. And the, re- and the reward therewith. Is everyone there? All right, so verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord. Read it from the King James here. We see in verse 7, the, the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. There's no lack. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desires life and love many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord delivereth them out of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Real briefly, I'm not going to have you turn to them, but you can just listen. Psalm 111 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do His commandment. His praise endures forever. Proverbs 1 verse 7, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and and instruction. Proverbs 2 5, Then will you discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. Proverbs 8 13, I'm going to fire a few more Proverbs at you real quickly. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy in the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Proverbs 9, verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Proverbs 15, 33, The fear of the Lord is the instruction for wisdom, and before honor comes humility. We have this recurring theme throughout the Proverbs that the wisest man... A man endowed by God's wisdom, God gave it to him, says he talks about the fear of the Lord and the importance of it. Last one from the Proverbs here, Proverbs 16, verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. The fear of God, that reverencing and knowing who God is, that he is not only the most loving person that you could ever meet, but it's such a love that would not allow anything wrong in it. It's such a pure love that anything that's foreign to it has to be put to death. It has to be annihilated. It has to be gone. It can't mix with this God kind of love, this pure love of God. Fear the Lord. Another psalm real quickly. Psalms 112, 1 verse 8. You can go ahead and turn there with with me. And while you are, I'm going to remind you of what Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13 says. That the preacher wrote, right? The same author of the Proverbs there, Solomon. Again, Solomon received wisdom from Almighty God. Because when God came to him and said, I'll give you whatever you want. You found favor. I mean, this is my paraphrased version. I want to give you something. You found favor in my sight. What what do you want? And he asked. He could have asked for anything. He could have asked for things that we see around us in the world system that would say, oh, you know, the top you could remain is such and such a huge, vast amount of wealth that you'd be secure forever and, you know, you could pass down to generations. Who knows? He could have asked for anything. But he asked for wisdom. And God gave it to him. And after he writes the book of Ecclesiastes, what does he sum it up with after he goes into reminding us about all that we could toil and labor for in this life, giving our all, just, you know, sun up to sundown, working to try and build our own kind of kingdoms that is just vanity and vexation of spirit. How many times does he say all is vanity and vexation of spirit, right? But he says this, 
Verse 13, uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. You don't have to be there, but just listen. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Everything's talked about in, in, in that book. Fear God. He lists first. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. <laughs> Doesn't seem too difficult, right? Fear God and keep his commandments. Isn't it amazing that, that God works such a miracle that it's so easy that babes could receive? Isn't it just incredible? But yet, if you become wise with the wisdom of the world, it becomes confusing. You know, you scratch your head, as we're going to see over here, his system that he talks about, about, you know, taking no thought, telling about the rich fool who does something which the world tells us to do, and that is lay up for ourselves treasure in this earth so that we might have to be able to support our family, our friends, be dignified and have the things we are. But it's not what God tells us to do. I'm breaking a little forward ahead, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, Psalms 112, verse 1 through 8. Praise you the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. All these lists of, of the reward of the fear of the Lord. The reward of the fear of the Lord. Oh, how incredible. The reward of the fear of the Lord. Let that resound in your spirit. Yeah, it's rhyme. It rhymes. You may think it's cute from an English language. No, I did not have that written down. But just the, it's echoing in me to, to just pour out to you the reward of the fear of the Lord. The reward of the fear of God Almighty. The sovereign, the just, the true, the altogether righteous, the altogether holy. Verse 3, wealth and riches shall be in his, in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious. He's full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his fear with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Again, the trust in God. The trust in God. The requirement and really why, as I see it, why Christ Jesus says, you know, take no thought. The Matthew 6, it's laid out in Matthew 6, and I'm actually going to take you guys to, to Luke 12, because I know you just, I know you guys have been pouring over Matthew 6 and 7, right? Because the pastor said, you know, all we needed to do is grab a hold of that. And if we had nothing else, we'd be just so changed anyway that by the commands, again, that Jesus said. These were Christ Jesus' words. Verse 8, his heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. I have a few more verses of Scripture, scripture but I'm, I'm going to jump now to Luke 12. So please, turn with me to Luke 12, verse 1. And we're going to read the sermon that Jesus taught. And more than likely, He probably taught it many, many times. It was probably one of His main themes that He taught and gave to the multitudes, right? Because it's not like there was just one event where there's, you know, 5,000 people, not including women and children, or other people. There's many, many times that these are recorded. And uh, if you don't have a copy of the sequential lives, life of Jesus Christ, this is a commercial for it. Get it. Pastor Mark lays out proofs, many proofs, about these events being, different events being separated, that it wasn't just one event. Again, if you just didn't catch anything I just said, remember that the scripture says, if 
the worlds could not contain all the volume of what he did, right? So we got a very, he gave us just what we need. He gave us exactly what he need, what we needed in this word. So Luke 12, is everybody there? If you are, say amen. amen. That was a good amen. Praise God. Let me turn there. I'm not there. Here I am. Verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, and so much that they trode one another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, first thing he says here, beware you have the leaven of the Pharisees, and tells us what that is here, which is hypocrisy. First thing he tells us is, watch out for hypocrisy. Stating one thing, stating that you're doing one thing, but really you're doing another, right? How God hates hypocrisy. And he tells us, you know, many times the example of the Pharisees <laughs> who would pray these loud prayers to be heard, right? Just, just for show. But there wasn't truth there. It was hypocrisy. It was saying one thing and doing another. Verse 2, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. Again, pausing real quick. This, one of the themes here being fear God. You give account for everything you do, no matter what, where you are, where you're at. And just that awesomeness, you know, to where you, you, you move into this place of this relationship of the love of God that I know many of you have, have. And it's, it's this love, and it's out of this love that you, you know, love works no ill to his neighbor. It's this love that you, out of relationship, you, you don't want to do anything that would grieve his heart, just as you wouldn't want to do anything to hurt your brother or sister around you or those of you in a marriage relationship. It's this love that, that just so cherishes somebody that you wouldn't want to do anything to bring them any kind of pain or hurt. And it was all designed by an everlasting, ever-loving God. <laughs> the supreme example of love and life that springs forth out of it. So fearing God, knowing that whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he has killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Verse 6, are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? Even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are more value than many sparrows. That God so loves us, I know many of you have heard this before, but let the revelation of this amazing care, the utmost care that someone could ever have, that he knows every part of you so much uh, that the count of the thread of each line of hair or whatever you call it, strand of hair, he's got it, that he's that interested in you and I, that he knows every detail about us. For has he not did he not form us in the womb? Did he not form us? Would we forget by what we think we know about what science says about the creation of life when the Almighty is actually the orchestrator of life? As testified by the prophets that he forms in the womb. He forms. It is God 
who gives life. That children are his heritage, his inheritance. That he's so involved in every aspect of that. The forming power of God. Fear God. Right? It's easy, again, with this theme of fear God, it's easy to be blinded, deceived, maybe taking for complete fact what we see around us. Science is good. I'm all for science, right? What is science at its heart, right? It, it's the testing of the physical world around us to obtain truths, right? Things that are reproducible. Dr. Stewart, is that an okay definition? All right. I got a witness. So it's by what men have been able to attest and confirm by what they can see. But remember, it doesn't take into account for the spiritual. The spiritual. From Genesis to Revelation, it tells us many th wild things about the spiritual, right? And there's a lot of avenues I could go to to begin to uncover that, but I'm going to refrain to stay with the heart of what I want to talk about tonight. That really is a tandem and a re-emphasis of the powerful word that went forth about get detached, right? Get detached by what the world tells us is success and by what the world tells us we're supposed to do, which is really just going to, as mentioned earlier, where the wisest man in the world said it's just vanity and vexation, right? It's just, it's just toiling for naught at the end of the day. And we're going to be reminded of that in just a few minutes here by the parable of the rich fool. <laughs> Don't forget about what the rich fool has to tell us. And it's God who called him the fool, the rich fool. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, his presence is just so good. He constantly has more for us, and it's just, it's overwhelming how it can go deeper and deeper, and how he draws us with his course of loving kindness, and how he just wants us to be hungry for more and more, and he, as we do that, he just, he gives it to us. <laughs> he gives us more and more, more and more and more, more and more and more and more. And I tell you, press in, there is more. I tell you, if, you're, if you haven't experienced everything from, from even just a tingle of when the glory and presence, press in for that. But I tell you, it gets deeper. I can already say it. I'm going for more times where I, it's just it so overwhelms my body and being that it's like every emotion is like full crying but also full joy. And it's where you're almost incapacitated to where, and what I mean by that is, you, it's almost like you can't even move. You lose control. And this is a terrible example because it's the complete opposite of the divine realm. But maybe just to give you an example because it might be something you have experienced that you don't want to experience anymore. And that is complete fear to where you're paralyzed and you can't move. How many of you have ever experienced that where you were so afraid that you couldn't move? Any hands? We got a few. Some people, a few people have actually experienced it. I know we live in a plush world now. Pretty plush, pretty comfy. We got it pretty good. What was Pastor Mark saying? It's, it's a time that's kind of really like no other time because it's such uh, almost a deceit because you can, it's like a false sense of security, Right? But anyway, we don't want to be paralyzed with fear. That was my terrible example of trying to say that there is an overwhelming presence of God. There is a place. Now, I, I have not yet had an encounter where I just immediately fall to my face as John did, right? At the revelation of Jesus. But I'm going for that. 
<laughs> where Christ Jesus is able to appear before me where I can behold him with my eyes now and not be totally freaked out and die or something, right? Because there is an overwhelming glory of God that without a miracle grace, and I, all I can say as I know it is so filled with him that constraints of the earthly body would not prevent us to be seized, to be and experience His fullness. If you think you've experienced His fullness, I would encourage you to keep reading Read again, read again, read again. We're going for that fullness, but it's more than a shout. It's more than a lifting of the hands. Uh, it makes alive every part, every fiber of your being. Praise God. Okay. Continuing on here. Verse 8. Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. He that denies me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemes against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers, take ye no thought of how you shall answer. Or what you shall say, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. Here we go. We got a big part of this now that's going to jump into that get detached message. The, de the, the taking no thought that we see in Matthew chapter 6. And one of the company. So here's what's amazing. I'm going to break in with just a little bit. This is not what the Word says. But we have between verse 12... Jesus saying, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. And then all of a sudden, we got this guy who comes on the same saying, Master, speak to my brother that he divide his inheritance to me. Now, I like to think that it happened pretty quickly because I think it just speaks to the stupidity of we <laughs> in this world system. The things that we think are important. Jesus is just talking about the Holy Ghost is going to give you, he's going to teach you in the self-same hour what you're going to say, right? This divine miracle. And all of a sudden, the next verse, we're interrupted by this guy saying, Master, speak to my brother that he gives me the inheritance, give me what is mine. And let's say that it actually was sizable and something that his half would have been, you know, had him set. For the rest of his life because then that at least makes it a little easier to maybe confirm oh maybe yeah maybe that no 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 how many times do we hear Christ Jesus wanted to say to us I'm gonna give you the Holy Ghost to teach you all the things that you were supposed to know to live out of the miracle realm and we say I need my inheritance my job, God, God, just touch my boss so he knows that I need this raise or this thing. Whatever it is that would be our supply that would not be a supply that comes from the trust in God. <laughs> what is that for you that would cause you as this man? We may all look at it studiously, you know, oh, shame, shame, dear, dear, how could this man... Be so unwise in his self. Here he is standing before Christ Jesus, the almighty living God. And then he, uh, he's then asking for something that would just be this temporal life. He could have asked him anything, but he interrupts Jesus here or so. If you're just, if you're just to take it verse by verse, it's an interruption, right? It's a, 
It's a little loose there how, how quickly these things frame, frame out. But just go with me a little bit. That he would interrupt Jesus to say, Master, tell my brother to give me what's rightfully mine. And how many times do we look around at the things around us to ask the master to give us what we think is rightfully ours out of a purely natural, completely attached realm, attached to the world. And I've got this image in my mind of like a parasite sucking the blood of, you know, something that it's got there. God forbid we ever be like that where it's like we're a parasite on the back of the animal that is our job. That we would so cleave to it that our life source is our job. Oh, come on. I know this is preaching to somebody. I have watched now a couple times the get detached message because it's so true, right? It's so easy to forget. Whoa, Jesus told me to take no thought when all I'm taught from probably kindergarten up at least a little bit in kindergarten. I didn't go to kindergarten, so I don't know. But um, probably taught in kindergarten to, uh, you know, begin to, to, to train yourself. You're learning to the basics of the alphabet and the fundamentals of reading and counting, right, so that you can become a self-sustained person able to interpret various readings and sources, right? Isn't that what education does? It empowers us to be able to learn about the things around us, and many times it is, again, structured by the physical laws of the universe that do not take into account the spiritual laws of God. And many times prevent, at the very best, and often, many times, completely blind men's eyes from the knowledge of the supernatural God. If I had to share with you a, a quick tangent, I'm going to get back on track. If I had to share with you some of the readings that I've had to do <laughs> about how it's all structured and our lineage and the evolution processes of the mind, and anyway, I'm, it's to say that the wisdom of men utter absolute foolishness compared to the way God made everything. We started off with Psalms 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. Day unto day utter speech. We see this universe around us moving. The testify of the supreme supernatural almighty God. In such perfect order And we, as astute, learned men, can come up with a complete <laughs> explanation of how it's completely of other than God-driven. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God for His goodness and mercy that He draws all men, no matter how terrible they can be by having and thinking they got everything figured out. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So we got this guy, right? Master, speak to my brother that he divided the inheritance with me. His whole world right now in this verse is revolving about this this thing that can secure him more than likely for life. That sec can secure him in this world. And what does Jesus say, verse 14? I love this. He says, and he said unto him, Man, <laughs> who made me a judge or a divider over you? Here's Jesus, he's saying, Man, who made me a divider over you? Maybe he says with a little bit more sternness of authority, highly, highly possible. Man, who made me a judge or divider over you? 
And he said unto them, and this is one of the big keys about the detached sermon. Take heed and beware of covetousness. He says, take heed. And I believe, I can't speak the, the Greek word there, but I believe, we'll have to get it confirmed by Pastor Mark, but it's a strong word. Maybe we don't understand today what heed means. We heed a stop sign, you know. Sometimes we can, hopefully not anybody here would do such a thing, but run a stop sign or something. Let's say it's out in the middle of the country where nobody comes, but, you know, where you'd heed a stop sign. Again, kind of a lame example to show and exemplify, hopefully, that heed has a bit more stronger context here. Give, give uh, as the King James would say by the mouth of Paul, earnest heed, right? He says, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in an abundance of the things he possesses. Again, that reminds you, right? The world teaches us that it does consist by the things we possess. It's where our status, the status symbols. How many times have you heard people say, you can tell a person by a car they drive. You can tell a person by the this, by the that, by the standards of this world, right? It's a system that has been put into place for a while. And we hear these things. It's not always true, but usually, you know, the nice car, somebody's going to be a nice job, right? There's the fakies and other things, but let's not get into that. But the, the, whole, the whole message here is it's not about the abundance of the things we possess that is defined as success, right? It's going to be the complete opposite. The thing that causes the rich man to go away sad. Pastor Mark has said many times, as an example, you know, Jesus didn't tell him that all the amazing things that would happen if he had just left everything. You know, Jesus himself said, no man leaves father or mother, mother houses, lands for me, except he receives it's a hundredfold, right? And this life and the light to come, is, is that, does that sound familiar to any of you? These promises that Jesus had said, you know, of these that would follow him. The rich reward of the fear of the Lord and the following. Wow, where does time go? I've got to read it one more time. Verse 15. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. This is again Jesus telling us, take heed, beware of covetousness. For man's life consists not in the abundance of the things we possess. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. Rich man. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no more room to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Sounds like a good business plan, right? A good strategy. Doesn't that make sense, you business people, businessmen? Hey, I'm running out of room to contain my wealth, my, my source that brings the lavish wealth that I have. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so that my wealth flow and cash flow can increase. Sounds like a pretty good business plan, right? Does that make sense? Do we got a couple nods. And I'm doing it, and I'm trying to stir you, stir you and push your buttons and push my buttons, too, to remember that a lot of the times we think the way that we would increase our materialism, which I know many of you know exactly what I'm talking about because you heard several times now this, in this vein of get detached, right? The materialism provision, right? But what is God going to say to this person who we just look at and it looks like, oh, that's a solid business plan. Forbes magazine would, you know, say, yeah, sounds good. Looks good. That's it. That's what, it's, that's what you're going to need to do to bring the increase, to bring the security. 
to bring everything, what, everything from 401k, whatever else, the the unmentionable businessmen who I will refrain from saying any names. I'm sure you can think of some immediate ones right now, especially with all that's going on. <laughs> Leaving quickly. Moving on. What is God going to say about all this? <laughs> ha! Verse 18, because he said, I will, I'll, this will I do. I'm going to pull down my barns. I'm going to build greater. I'm going to build bigger than I ever have before. My salary is going to be increasing. This is going to be great. I'm going to be set. I'm going to be set that I'll be able to say in verse 19, I will say to my soul, you have much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Everything that I've labored for, all my hours that I put in, time, much blood, sweat, and tears, I'm going to finally be able to have enough and reach that point in the scale where I can say, soul, lay back. You worked hard, I laid it, I got all this. I can finally rest and enjoy all that I've got. What does God say? Verse 20. But God said unto him, You fool! This night thy soul shall be required of you. Then who shall those things be which you have provided? God saying, Whose things will, the, will that be? All of your life rich man all of your life rich fool that you spent building who knows maybe this guy wasn't born into riches maybe he was one of those guys who was poor let's just use this as an example right probably wasn't the case here but just for a dramatic effect to amplify the story let's just say he was started off poor right And he saw the others around him that had some wealth. He said, I'm going to get that. I can do that. I can pursue the American dream. <laughs> I can do this. And he built himself up to a, a place of riches and wealth that he had attained through much labor, through just giving all of himself to this. And God, at the end of the day, after his business plan that many of you and I, if we were sitting in the room of his counselors, would say, yeah, that's it, man. That's it. You got it. That, that's it. That's smart. Smart move. Smart business move. Smart move. All the, all the multitudes would be saying, smart move, wise move. And God says, God. God says, you fool. <laughs> and fool means like, you absolute idiot. <laughs> God says, you fool. Again, I'm, la I'm laboring with this for a purpose, right? To remind us of the foolishness of this world system. That the God of this world, Satan, the master deceiver, would use to keep us laboring. Our life, our energy. The struggle is real. How many of you ever heard that? The struggle, the toil, the toil. The struggle's real, man. I'm up from the dawn to the setting sun, working hard. So I'm not a bomb. Anyway, you guys get what I'm saying. A simple reality. A parable here that speaks to our lives. And what we should let guide to tell us as success. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then those, then who shall the things be which thou hast provided? 
And we never know when the time clock of our life runs out. And would we run the risk of God saying, you fool. Verse 21, Christ Jesus says, So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. We want to be rich towards God. Rich in the things of the kingdom. Rich with the incorruptible riches that moss nor ruth doth corrupt for thieves, thieves, not thieves, thieves cannot break through or steal. Rich towards God. Verse 22, And he said unto his disciples, Hang with me a little longer. I have a lot of other places I was going to go, but I'm just going to stay in 12, and then we're going, it's going to be enough to have the full effect of this fear of God. Get detached. Kingdom of God. Command. Verse 22, And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what you, you shall eat, neither for the body what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor bond. But God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? <laughs> I've got that highlighted in my Bible. Because it's just, it's kind of funny. How much more are you better than fowls? How much more are you better than the birds? You who were created in the image of God. I don't recall hearing that a bird was created in the image of God, right? We were. We got, we're we can, we can look up that verse of Scripture, right? And he's telling us we're more better than that. The beautiful little birds. Right, the Matthew chapter 6, about how he, he, he takes such good care, and how, how we're going to see here, about how he clothes the field. Clothes the field. Verse 25. And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then not be able to do that which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? When we really realize how helpless we are without <laughs> the Almighty God. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not raised like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, and seek not ye what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, neither be of you a double doubtful mind. For all those things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth these things, knows the things that you have need of, knows that you have need of these things. Isn't that amazing? He gets right there in verse 30. He's telling us about, you know, it's what the world, it's what everyone around us is seeking. And remember not to get caught up or with what people around us seek and define as their world of success. And then he goes on to say right there, after the little colon, your father he knows you need these things. Again, that he's going to supply every need. He knows what you have need of before you even ask. But rather, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that, sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. Treasure in the heavens that fail not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupt. Verse 33, real quickly. Uh, as I understand it, and it's noted by Dake here, that's how they used to, it's essentially uh, how they used to do the bank accounts. It was put in the bag and kept track of. So the bank accounts. That the bank account be in heaven, in the heavenly. 
For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for the Lord for when he will return from the wedding, that he comes and knocks and you may open unto him immediately. Blessed are the servants whom the Lord, when he comes, finds watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. It reminds me of Matthew 25, right? The parable of the ten virgins, right? The five foolish and the five wise. The five wise. The five that said, the foolish ones who thought they had enough, that thought they had the supply to get them through. Let it speak to you. Maybe they thought they had enough by what they, their standard, which that which the world system told them was enough. There was the five wise who had more than enough, who had More than enough. And it's uh, one last thing I'm going to say about that Matthew 25. It's the, it's the scariest words I've ever heard and would, would never, ever, ever be like the worst nightmare to hear. I never knew you. Radical, huh? I never knew you. Okay, moving on here. Go ahead and please stand with me if you will. There's a lot more here that it getting through. He talks about the wise steward. He says, verse 39, And this you know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would have come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. And then Peter asks him, Lord, are you telling this to us? Or are you telling us, is this for everybody? And Jesus answers, his answer is then, you know, he talks about the good steward, about how we need to be ready. We never know what time, what hour our life would be required of us. I'm going to read, the last verse I'm going to read here is just 48. Skipping over some great things. I encourage you to go back and read it. For unto whom... Whosoever much is given of him shall be required. And to whom much have committed much, of him they will ask more. And much has been required of us because we know what is required of us. Right? I remind you of the words spoken by Jeremiah the prophet that again is an echo of this. One of the heart messages addressed here in Luke 12. Cursed is the man who trusts in man for his provision. But blessed is the man who makes God the sole object of his trust. Hallelujah. So amazing, amazing, amazing. So amazing, amazing, amazing. Let him touch you. Let him take you deeper than you've ever been before. deeper than you've ever been before. Father, I pray that the reality of your word 
that not one person in this place lose sight of the eternal purposes and call that you have for us. Lord, where you said, come out from among them. Lord, just as Abraham, a man who could have had everything in this life, who could have had the biggest palace, the most riches to build whatever he wanted to, said, I seek a kingdom and builder, the maker of whom is God. And I'll dwell in a tent just so I don't run the risk of losing sight of the greatest treasure, the trust in God. Abraham, the father of faith, and how we're, we're told in Hebrews 11 about how he trusted God and counted God faithful. May we count God faithful. May we count God faithful to trust more than we've ever trusted so that the sole object, that every means of supply is in God and not in the hands. One other thing that hit me so strong as well with the Get Detached sermon was the making wealth for the kingdom. <laughs> Because I've seen it. People go to make wealth for the kingdom and it takes them out. So let us remind and edify each other. Those of us who say, well, as Pastor Mark said, forget about all that. Forget about that. Nonsense, right? Because it can become a snare and a deception. Go after God. Have your trust wholly in God. He's a God of miracles. A God of miracle provision. Hallelujah. 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 So amazing. So amazing. You're so amazing, God. So amazing. So amazing, Lord, you are. So amazing, miraculous. So amazing. Those of you who have purposed in your heart to honor the Lord with your substance as a token where you say, Oh God, Here's where my treasure is. My treasure is in you. That I'm not strapped by a world system that says I can only give this much to have, this much to cover the rest. That's got me completely stressed out of my mind. It's got me laboring for the meat that perishes just to be able to keep up. But those of you who know and will say and are stirred as the word has gone forth of take no thought. Of the God who possesses all the wealth of this world. God who knows where every valuable mineral, such as gold, where, every, where it's placed everywhere in the earth, where he has it. Those of you who would say, I trust you, Father. Just come forward and begin to, to give. I thank you, Lord, for the miracle multiplication of every offering, God, that every heart is here, is so stirred with the truth of heaven, 
Lord, that the miracle abundance that you could supply be supplied in such an abundant way that it's not ruinous in any way. We thank you, Lord, that you're a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. You are the God who is interested in the offering. You are the God who sees that it's not the size of the offering, but it's the heart. And many times it is the size of the offering because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And Lord, as you've showed us and made us aware that the riches of this world, the money, the mammon, the materialization is not your way because it would cause us to trust in what we can do, what we can build, what we can create to be successful, what our business plans according to the natural reasoning of man would be. Father, we say examine us. Our hearts are wide open before you. Bring a fresh revelation in the areas of our life where we've been attached, where we've been consumed, where we've been driven by the rat race of this world, by the system which we have thanked, which we have thought and been shown to be reality when it's not truth. But Lord, with truth and whole heart sincerity, we say, our trust is in you. Our trust is in you, God. And those of you who cannot say that completely with, with feeling it in everything you're being, in your being, just say, God, teach me how to trust you more. Teach me how to trust you, God. I've become in such a ritual of being able to trust myself to bring this, to get that, to get this, to be my own provider. When you have purposed and you want to be my only provision. Lord, we thank you for this miracle. Lord, everyone who came up, Lord, to present the offering, to present the offering, I command increase. I command multiplication. Thank you, Lord, for those of us in this place, though we be but few, we be mighty. Lord, that we will participate and cooperate in moving and being a part of raising up many, many laborers. That we be laborers Lord, that though we be but few, all of us be laborers into your harvest. Hallelujah. Those of you who need to go, consider yourself dismissed. I tell you, I tell you, those of you hungry, those of you receptive, you will begin to see things. You will begin to hear things. You will begin to have direction clearer than you've ever known by the miracle by the miracle. Keep God first. Seek His kingdom and His righteousness. Don't have it all figured out because it's just another distraction, right? It's just a distraction that would turn your heart. Lord, we're so desperate for you. So desperate and needy. 
so desperate and needy for you. Without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we can do nothing, God. For by you, we can do all things. By you, we can do all things. Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. If anyone has a need, you can come up here and present yourself before the Lord. Otherwise, those of you who, who, who can stay, just be in that worship. Be hooked up with us. For God to do mighty things. Look not to the things of man and what you see with the natural eye. For I tell you, God abundantly supplies all you have need of. He's the God of all grace, the God of all abundance, the God who owns everything, owns everything. Don't be doubtful, don't be doubtful, don't doubt one minute is care. How you care for us, Lord. How you care for us. More than we could ever care for ourselves or those around us. How you care for us. How you care for me. How you care for me. Just sing that out. Let the reality hit your soul. How you care for me. It's so true. He takes such good care of us. I can witness it. I see time and time again where I just say, God, you take such good care of me. You take such good care of me. And I pray that the eyes that have not seen it, those who it's not been a reality to begin to see it, of how great a care He takes of us. How you care for me. How you care for me. How you care for me. Those of you up here, let him just touch you now. How you care for me. How you care for me. Catchers, be ready because we're, we're going to go fast. Pretty fast as I know. Unless the Holy Spirit leads me. Because as Pastor Mark has modeled... It's not of man. I may come over by you and place one finger on you like that. It has nothing to do with me. It has to do with you and him. Many people, they wait till they get the hands laid on them. When the provision was there the whole time, all they had to do was turn their heart to him and receive. Remember, he's the best father there ever is, ever was, or ever will be. And it's freely His good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And what is that? Everything you could ever imagine that is life and godliness and riches that are eternal, that don't perish with the using, nothing of corruption, but of complete perfection.
Those of you up here, I'm not going to come around and ask you what you need. I'm just waiting a little bit longer. No. God himself, Christ Jesus, will meet, meet you at the point of your need. And I know many of you know this, but let it become a deeper reality, a greater reality. That it is God's touch you need. That it is God alone. For when you're driving home from this place tonight, it is you and Him. When you wake up tomorrow morning, it's you and Him. In the afternoon, it's you and Him. How you care for me, Lord. How you care for me. How you care for me. How you care for me. you care for me how you care for me Above all names, authority above all authorities, all powerful, whose dominion is greater than anything else. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, supply, build up abundantly more than you can ask or think. In the name How you care for me. How you care for me. What a miracle. You supply all I need. Would you supply all I need? Oh, how you care for me. Oh, how you care for me. And you supply all I need. 
that you supply all I need, all I need according to your riches and glory, according to your riches and glory. According to your riches. According to your riches and glory, God. How you care for me. How you care for me. How you care. How you care for me How you care for me How you care for me, Almighty God How you care for me you care for me and supply all I need you supply all I need you supply all I need according to your riches and glory According to your riches and glory, holy, 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 holy God. How you How you care for me, Lord Jesus. How you care for me, that you number the very number of my hairs. You number the very number of my hairs. You know everything about me. You created, acquainted with all my ways. My down city, my uprising. Every part of me, behind me for all around encompassing me that's how much you care you care you care you care you care for me how you care you care you care for me you care you care you care you care how you care for me 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 we love each and every one of you consider yourself dismissed we'll probably be here singing for a little while longer those of you who want to stay feel free to worship the reality of how he cares for us how he cares as a father pitieth his children <laughs> as a mother hen these are how he's described a mother hen you know cares for her chicks <laughs> how he cares for us each and every one of us no one excluded no matter who you are no how to matter how big or how small, how little or how great, no matter what you've done or haven't done, He cares for you and to bring you in to His greatness. So don't let the wisdom of this world infiltrate, compromise you. but be filled with the wisdom of heaven. Hallelujah. We love you guys.
how he cared for me how he cares for me how he cares for me you don't forget it oh not one moment of the day no what oh no matter what circumstances you find yourself in oh how he cares for you how he cares for you how he cares for you how he He cares for you. How 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 you care for me How you care for me Father How you care for me 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 